In this video, I want to show you how to send data from a web page to your ESP8266. So the web page that I'm going to make is one that lets you toggle the digital pins on your Arduino. So as you can see, when I press toggle pin 11, I got an LED to turn on. I'm going to toggle pin 13. So that turns on the other LED. I'm going to turn on the LED on pin 12 and of course you can toggle them again to turn them off so let's go ahead and take a look at the code let's start off with the website code so that will be the code that creates the three buttons and sends the data to the ESP module so this is my HTML code. Go ahead and copy it and paste it in Notepad. So I'm gonna show you how to save it as an HTML page so that you can open it from any web browser. So you will go ahead and copy this code, paste it in Notepad, and go ahead and save as I'm gonna save it to my desktop and this is very important make sure that you save it as the type of files and name it any anything you want so I'm just gonna name it abc.html so make sure that whatever your name is you put .html at the end so that uh, your web browser recognizes it I've actually saved mine as esp8266.html so I'm just showing you how to save uh, code as an HTML web page, so you would copy this code, paste it in here, save it. Uh, if you're curious about the text editor I'm using, it's called Notepad++. You can go ahead and Google it and download it. It's a pretty simple text editor, but it has syntax highlighting and other features. But anyway, so this is how I make my buttons. So each of the buttons is made with a button tag the stuff in green is just comments so the important things in the bottom tags are the IDs so this text between each of the bottom tags is the text that the user sees so that will be toggle pin 11 that's the text here the ID is going to be the data that we send to the Arduino so that it knows which digital pin to toggle so when they when the user presses this button, uh, they are going to be toggling pin 11. If they press this one, there there will be they will be toggling pin 12. If they press this other one, pin 13. So now in my next line, what I'm doing is I'm including a JavaScript library called jQuery. So to obtain that library, you simply go to this link. I will be posting it in the description of this video. So go to this link, right click, save as, and save it in your in the same folder where you have saved your HTML web page. So I saved it in my desktop. So that's where I'm saving this library. And do not change the name, so I'm just leaving it as jQuery and then it's saving it as a JavaScript file, which is what we want. So you would go ahead and click save here. As you can see, I've already have it saved. So I'm just going to cancel. So this line is simply including my library, the uh, jQuery library, into my website or my web page. Next is the JavaScript code that actually sends the data to the ESP. So this is from my, uh, this is just standard jQuery. You can learn, you can learn more about jQuery in this website. So go ahead and follow the tutorials. Also, if you want to learn HTML and JavaScript, if you don't understand some of the stuff I'm explaining here. But uh, basically this is a ready function. So that just simply says when the document is ready or when the website is finished loading, go ahead and execute this code. Notice that uh, my bottom tags have a class called LED. So what I'm saying here is when they click on any of the LEDs, 
or the LED buttons that have this class go ahead and execute this function and so the first thing that I do inside that function is I get the ID attribute so if they click on this button for example then the value returned by this piece of code is equal to 11 and I save that into my P variable so I have a variable called P that's where I'm saving the pin number either 11, 12 or 13 de depending on which button they click so if they click this one then uh, P will have the value of 13 and my other line there are only two lines is my get request line this is the line that sends the data to the ESP so I have my ESP's IP address as you can see mine is local I haven't put it on the internet but if you have your ESP available for anyone on the internet then you can simply go ahead and replace the your public IP address here or your website address if you are using a DNS server so what I'm saying here is send a get request to this address with this data so I'm sending a parameter called pin with the value of P which is what I whatever whatever ID I clicked on so like I said if I clicked on uh, toggle pin 12 the uh, toggle pin 12 button then this variable will have the value of 12 and that is what will be sent inside the parameter pin so what actually gets sent to the Arduino I have a sample of uh, what gets sent to my Arduino whenever I click pin 13 or so when I click uh, the toggle pin 13 button this is what my ESP receives and eventually my Arduino I will give you the Arduino code that you need also so this is what my Arduino sees and uh, every time the Arduino receives data from the ESP then you get this string here which says plus IPD this is the connection ID that's also very important it tells you which connection the Arduino is currently on so that way you can close the connection if you don't close your connection then you're gonna have many connections open and your ESP might work slower so it's very important to uh, eventually save this connection ID and so you can later go ahead and terminate that connection but uh, anyways my Arduino is going to be looking for this string and when it finds it it will get this connection ID and save it notice that there's also a string here that says pin equals so this this string pin comes from what I have in my HTML code so if I replace this word with something else then that will be replaced in my get request that the Arduino receives so this word comes right from here and the value of it comes from whatever is inside this variable so in my Arduino code I will be also searching for this string and then get this value and that way I know which pin to toggle so now that you know about the HTML code that is required to create the buttons and send data to the ESP let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino code that is in charge of receiving the data and toggling the button so this is my code I have included the serial library it's very similar to the code in my previous videos I've created a connection for my ESP8266 these are the pins that I'm going to toggle if you want to toggle more digital pins simply go ahead and repeat these two lines for the other pins and the code will work uh, the same way also if you want to add more pins don't forget to not only change the code in your Arduino by adding these two lines for those pins that you want to toggle but also adding another button 
line. So for example, if I wanted to toggle pin uh, 10, then I would add another line, change this to 10, change the text that the user sees, and then in my Arduino code, I would copy these two lines and paste them and change the value of the pin to 10 save it upload it to my arduino okay so then i'm uh, i created this function if you watch my previous video you know what the function does it uh, sends data to the esp so i'm resetting the esp changing the mode to an access point getting the uh, ip address of my esp Configuring it for multiple connections, turning on the server on port 80. So this is where I check whenever there's data available on the ESP. I first check if it's an IPD string, which tells me that a web browser or a web page is connecting or sending data to the ESP. So whenever this statement is true, that means that uh, I have a visitor on my website that's clicking the buttons. So I delay the code for a little bit to allow the serial buffer to fill up with uh, the strings that is receiving. This is where I store my connection ID. The reason why I subtract 48 is because whenever I read from my ESP, it reads in ASCII. So if you look at the ASCII table, you will notice that uh, the integer zero starts at 48. So by subtracting 48, I am changing this value from ASCII to the actual integer, since I have an integer variable here. So that is why I'm subtracting 48. And then, like I said, I have to find, find the string pin so that's from my get request pin equals. Every time you use the find function, it advances the cursor. So when I use find pin equals, my cursor is now located at this point. So that means that the next two characters will tell me my pin number. So this is where I read my first character and since I know that it's a two digit number, I multiply by 10 so that I can add it to the next integer and get my pin value. And this is where I toggle my pin. Lastly, I have to close the connection. So I pass it the connection ID that I had uh, stored here. So that'll be this value, that's the connection ID. So I close it and uh, that's really all there is to it. So I will be posting this code in my website. You can go to it by clicking on the link in the description of this video. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching.